Welcome, everybody. I'm Kelsey Martin. I'm the incredibly proud dean of the David Geffen School of Medicine and just delighted to welcome all of you to the 2020 induction ceremony for the Gold Humanism uh, Honor Society chapter at the David Geffen School of Medicine. And, and this year is unlike previous years because we're all joining each other uh, virtually. And um, but it's it's wonderful to be able to um, celebrate this event uh, together as a community. Um, I'm deeply grateful to our amazing IT team for, for bringing this together and for the phenomenal um, leaders in the Dean's office who organized the um, the Gold Humanism Honor Society, Kim and Sharon and Naveen, thank you so much for, for the work that you do. Uh, the Gold Humanism Honor Society is a signature program of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, which seeks to elevate the values of humanism and professionalism within the field of medicine and its constituent institutions. And the mission of the uh, Gold Humanism Honor Society is to recognize individuals who are exemplars of humanistic patient care and who serve as role models, as mentors and leaders in medicine. The society currently has over 30,000 members in training and in practice and the David Geffen School at UCLA uh, chapter of the Gold Humanism Honor Society recognizes senior medical students, residents and role model physician teachers for demonstrated excellence in clinical care, leadership, compassion and dedication to service. The GHHS serves as a steadfast advocate for humanism through a variety of activities for students and healthcare professionals. So we're incredibly proud and delighted today to welcome our sixth cohort of Gold Humanism Honor Society uh, members at UCLA. And in keeping with this being our largest fourth year class of medical students, this is our largest GHHS cohort to date. And this year we're actually inducting 31 students. Um, students, it's such an honor to join you for this special celebration and acknowledgement of your achievements. I can't think of anything that you or your family members should feel more uh, pride at being recognized for, for, for your humanism, your leadership, um, and, and really your dedication to, to service in medicine. Um, so congratulations uh, to all of you. And at this point, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Clarence Braddock, who's the Vice Dean for Education, Dr. Braddock. Thank you, Dean Martin. And I just want to start by also uh, congratulating all of you for this incredible honor uh, and share with you the pride we have in you and the pride that I know you feel for this important accomplishment. Um, you'll hear more about the, uh, the Gold Humanism Honor Society and how the selection happens and all that. But suffice it to say that there's, in my view, uh, not a higher honor uh, than to be recognized by your peers and by your faculty for your heart and uh, the heart that you bring to medicine. Make no mistake, medicine is a scientific profession, right? It's a scientific profession. Uh, we learn medicine, we study medicine in the mind, in the brain, uh, but we practice it from the heart. And the heart of medicine is compassion and humanism, which is what uh, Arnold Gold and Sandra, how they founded this, this organization years ago and why we were so proud six years ago to invite them to campus to help us launch our inaugural Gold Humanism Honor Society cohort. So uh, six years is a, it's a fabulous number because it means a, a, a yet another group of you to join that tradition of students being recognized for this uh, commitment to the heart of medicine. Now, being inducted is indeed a great privilege, a great honor but it's also an incredible responsibility. You've been identified by your peers and faculty as exemplars, and you join a very rarefied group of individuals who carry the baton for compassion, humanism, and medicine. And we know you're up to the task. Our, our chapter has a great tradition of a number of activities uh, to support patients and families and peers. Uh, and you'll hear more about that, I'm sure, in the program, but it represents the heart, the heart that you bring to 
your studies and you, we know that you'll bring to the practice of medicine. I would, in fact, I'd go so far as to say, and you know, as someone who runs medical education, we teach a lot of things, but there's no more important attribute to being a physician than compassion and humanism. So we're deeply in the debt of the Gold um, uh, Humanism Honor Society chapter of the Gold Foundation and all that it stand for and all that it's done uh, for the field of medicine. Um, now at this important moment in history, the Arnold P. Gold Foundation has released a statement about the necessity of addressing racism as part of our efforts to ensure humanism in healthcare. I would now like to share this statement followed by a moment of silence to honor and acknowledge those who have lost in our fight against systemic racism and in our fight against COVID-19. Losses themselves which disproportionately affect black and brown communities. Persistent racism threatens health, well-being, and life. We must come together now to create a more humanistic world for all people. The Arnold P. Gold Foundation is a leader in humanism in healthcare, which places human interests, values, and dignity at the center of care. This basis for healthcare is also the basis for a thriving world that supports the health of every single human being. We condemn racism and call upon us all in this fraught and historic moment to help correct the long-standing inhumanity that harms people of color. The social determinants of health define the odds of long life, of meaningful life. The COVID-19 pandemic itself has put health disparities into stark relief. The recent killings of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and other people of color, countless people of color who have been killed or harmed, have created a clear view of what Black Americans and people of color face daily. No human being should have to fear simple acts of driving, playing, dining, jogging, riding a bicycle in a world, in a word of living. Full, compassionate, collaborative, scientifically excellent care in a world which all can thrive must be the standard for every single human being, no matter whether they are a patient or a physician, no matter the, their skin color, no matter their gender or ethnicity or sexual orientation. And so the Gold Foundation joins the deep rising desire for change. It is time to come together to create the humanistic world that has been denied to so many. It is time to come together to more actively, to, to move more actively toward a world with true equity and health. It is time to, gather, to come together to address and dismantle racism. I would now invite you to join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. It's now my honor to introduce my colleague and friend, Dr. Lee Miller, our Associate Dean of Student Affairs and the 2013 recipient of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation Humanism and Medicine Award. Dr. Miller. Thank you uh, so much, Dr. Braddock. And first and foremost, my uh, really heartfelt congratulations to the students here today uh, who've been nominated by their peers and selected by the faculty for induction into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. It, it is such a great honor and, and please know how proud I am of, of each of you today. Now it's also a great honor for me to have the opportunity to introduce you to Dr. Sandra Gold, who along with her husband, Dr. Arnold Gold, created the Gold Humanism Honor Society. And it was their vision and their dream really to ensure that compassion, respect and empathy are at the core of all interactions with patients. I first met Arnold and Sandra about 28 years ago. Arnold was a pediatric neurologist at Columbia University. Sandra is a social scientist 
who earned her doctorate degree from Rutgers University, and she was Arnold's partner through nearly 50 years of marriage. And they were an incredibly um, dynamic, dynamic team. I was privileged to work with them over these years, and the passing of Arnold last year was a huge loss um, to all of us and to me both personally and professionally. Uh, as as um, you heard earlier, we were so honored to have both Arnold and Sandra here at UCLA for our inaugural Gold Humanism Honor Society induction ceremony six years ago. And we're honored, honored as well that Sandra has recorded some comments uh, to share with us today. Uh, Dr. Sandra Gold has been described as a visionary with great creativity, a warm spirit that you'll soon see, and infectious enthusiasm. So without any further ado, Dr. Sandra Gold. It's time to put on my hat so you can be sure it's really me. Hello and hugs to all my cherished longtime friends at UCLA and heartfelt greetings to everyone who's attending this 2020 Gold Humanism Society induction. Thanks for inviting me to deliver my very first Zoom Gold Humanism Honor Society induction. Like each and every induction, however, we're here for the same thing, to honor you, new members of the GHHS, for your competence, your compassion, your commitment, and your courage, especially now during COVID. I'm reminded of a wonderful night six years ago when my husband Arnold and I traveled to LA and were able to meet the parents and the students of the very first group inducted into the Gold Humanism Honor Society from UCLA. After the ceremony, I remembered that Arnold and I stayed on for a long, long time until it was very late. We were talking to all the people who participated. We learned a great deal about their dreams, about their inspirations, about their mentors, and about what they were worried about in terms of their future in medicine. Well, I regret that tonight we won't have time to sit and schmooze, but let's take a minute now to thank some very important people and applaud Sharon Yunkin and Naveen Alfaro, the current chapter advisors who so smoothly and, and have contributed so much to helping humanism and healthcare through GHHS in so many ways every day. I am also delighted to recognize your Dean, Dr. Kelsey Martin, the Vice Dean and Chief Medical Education Officer, Dr. Fradek III, and Assistant Professor, Dr. Adam Chickdance. And of course, I so wish I could personally greet and meet all of those who, fr who are friends and family members who have provided your lifelong support and encouragement and who've helped bolster your humanistic spirits for all these years. My goals tonight are twofold. One, to help those who are new to the Arnold P. Gold Foundation to understand what a very special and unique honor it is to be inducted into this particular honor society, the Gold Humanism Honor Society. And two, to encourage you new UCLA GHSF members to become even more proactive in shaping the future of medicine in our country. First, why is this honor special? Well, it's unique because ours is an honor society that is not merely honorific. Membership in GHHS expects your lifetime leadership, that's a long time, as an innovator, an advocate, and a role model for humanistic healthcare, healthcare that provides optimal outcomes. This honor is also special because it was bestowed upon you by your peers. When we were creating this honor society, we utilized the brain power and experience of many outstanding researchers to learn about awards and the selection of award recipients. 
we were advised that the most objective selections would occur if peers were involved in the selection process. It's your peers who really know you. It's your peers who see you when you're not on stage, when you're not aware that anyone's looking. It's when you, when you are talking to friends, when you're talking to your, your friends' pets, when you're talking to the clerks on the ward and the housekeepers and the nurses and your, your general community. You were nominated to the GHHS by those who know you, your classmates. The entire class is asked questions that evaluate both the clinical excellence as well as the compassion of all members of your class. Based on the results of the nomination survey, a GHHS selection committee is formed. That group rates all submitted nomination materials, selects the recipients, approximately 15% of a class. I want to give you some examples of questions. A, name three classmates you would want as your doctor or a doctor for a loved one. Or, name three classmates who best exemplify the values of humanism identified by the GHHS, i.e. cares, integrity, excellence, compassion, altruism, uh, respect, empathy and service. As you might notice, these questions touch upon whether you think a person is truly helpful and kind as well as clinically skilled. Well, the powerful COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to threaten our national health, particularly challenges the very strengths for which you earned GHHS membership your outstanding competence, your compassion, your commitment, and your courage. Here's a story that to me illustrates the incredibly stressful healthcare situations being faced in the United States now by physicians like you who are rising to the crisis over and over again. The story was told by a woman whose mother was in a hospital ICU bed due to COVID. Bereft that she was prevented from being with her mother, she imagined her mother critically ill and dying alone, isolated from family and without comfort. Then she received a FaceTime call from a young woman who identified herself as her mother's doctor. The news wasn't good. Her mom was indeed not doing well at all. The busy doctor offered her phone to allow a FaceTime visit between mother and daughter. The conversation was brief, but meaningful. The doctor promised to call with updates and did so. The daughter began to feel her mother was being cared for and cared about. Several days later, the doctor's call pronounced that the mother's condition had worsened and death seemed imminent. The doctor held the phone to her patient's lips so that she and her daughter could speak last words. And in the other hand, the doctor was holding her patient's hand. You will be tested by death and life many times during your career. Your courage and your commitment to humanistic patient care, your compassion and competence will be a great blessing to your patients and to their family members. This COVID-19 pandemic has captured the public's attention regarding the importance of good accessible health care. Providing humanistic care as illustrated by this story is a popular topic today. The national debate about the future of health care is front and center. How can you influence the course of healthcare, you, and obtain the system you want in place for your patients and for yourself? Here's my answer. Educate yourself 
and consider the issues surrounding health care and vote. In many ways, the future of medicine is on the ballot in 2020. Please exercise your right to vote for the congressional and presidential candidates of your choice on November 3rd. Winning the right to vote for all citizens took far too many years to accomplish. Even though the United States was established as a democracy, the original voters for the first president had to be white, male, and property owners. Arnold's mom was a practicing attorney in New York City before she was permitted to vote in a federal election, a right which was only made possible in 1920 by the 19th Amendment to our Constitution. Poll taxes, gender, race, age, literacy, and other voting restrictions have been lifted. But many obstacles remain since the first presidential election. Speak out, please cast your vote. Vote for those who share your vision for health care in America whatever that may be, and for those who will work to implement it. Remember, not voting is also a vote. On a final note, please do keep in touch with me. You know, just last week, I, I heard from a young woman to whom I said those very words several years ago, and we had a delightful and wonderful exchange. Just as your designation as a leader of humanism will be with you your entire professional career, so will the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, and so will the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Your GHHS membership will provide a support system in your endeavors if, if you will update your personal contact info on the GHHS website whenever you move. I urge you to do so. Again, congratulations on your induction into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. And thank you again for your commitment, your competence, your compassion, and for your courage. It truly makes all the difference, not only to your patients, but to you and your professional satisfaction. In the words of that very famous physician, Hawkeye, AKA Alan Alda from the TV show MASH, which probably lots of you have never seen, who said, your head bone is connected to your heart bone. Don't ever let them come apart. Thanks again. And until we meet again, Wow. Well, I, I hope that you folks were able to appreciate the spirit of, of Dr. Um, Sandra Gold. But before we go on with the program, we have a, a special surprise guest who wanted to zoom in uh, from the East Coast to um, say hello. So if you're there, if you'd come on camera, please. Hello. Hello. Can you see me? Hello. Lee, can you see me? Absolutely. Oh, I see myself. It was so strange to hear myself talking on the Zoom. And of course, uh, I have 16 family members here for dinner. So I'm just, uh, every now and then you'll see me wave to someone goodbye, goodbye, Vic. Um, it's like herding cats. I have uh, uh, three of my children, their spouses, and uh, I have uh, the rest of the people are great, are grandchildren. So anyway, I never expected to be able to say hello and in personal real time uh, tell you how much I uh, congratulate you and how much I, uh, you hear someone in the background, um, how much I am hoping that um, you will enjoy the practice of medicine as Arnold P. Gold did. He had 57 years, and every time he spoke to a group, he would tell them how much he loved being a doctor. So I, oh, I hope you have that blessing. 
And I suspect that if you hold true to the standards and the values that you have learned here at UCLA, um, that, that you will be able to say uh, when you hang up your white coat um, that you had the most amazing experience and that you're, you had a meaningful life and, and helped so many in this world uh, to make it better. Um, you know, you won't always find the kind of um, supportive environment that you have found here at UCLA, because I know uh, that many of those uh, who you work with on a daily basis are cherished friends of mine special friends that I was allowed to get to know because of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation and our work and our shared uh, desire to work in this mission. So um, I, I wanted to say that you heard me say that um, you, you, I want to keep in touch with you. Um, and uh, if you are of the mind that you might want to someday reach out to me uh, for something special that happened or something you've thought of that needs to get done and you want to have some encouraging cheerleading, please go to your um, advisors and they will give you contact information for me. To your guests, uh, honored guests, uh, I am delighted that you will be able to be part of this experience tonight and to all of you, um, congratulations, a big virtual hug. Um, and, and now on to the ceremony. Sandra, thank you so, so much for making this event even more, uh, even more special for us. I'm, I'm just one last word. I've been invited to one of your meetings. So sometime in this fall era of your chapter, I'll be with you again. We look forward to it. All right, um, four years ago, um, we initiated the tradition of having the annual Humanism Grand Round Speaker address the incoming group of students that are, are being inducted um, in this ceremony. And today it's my absolute uh, pleasure to introduce a fellow pediatrician, Dr. Adam Chickadance. And Dr. Chickadance is an assistant professor of pediatrics at the David Geffen School of Medicine. And he was selected by last year's uh, Gold Humanism Honor Society chapter to deliver Humanism Grand Rounds on February 5th, 2020, as part of Internal Medicine Grand Rounds. Dr. Schickendance's Grand Rounds topic was Poverty, Practice, and Purpose, Scarcity's Effect on Health and Medicine. It's my great honor to introduce Dr. Adam Schickendance. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Congratulations, everyone. I'm happy to be with you this evening to celebrate you, the newest inductees in the Gold Humanism Honor Society, and to celebrate the hope we place in you, the future of medicine. Um, it's a real privilege that I don't take lightly, especially now. Um, a few months ago, February, when I spoke with many of you, seems like ages ago. Much has changed, and much that remains unchanged, we now see with new eyes, right? New perspective. Whether that be greater appreciation for the things that bring us together, or greater urgency and recognition of the so many things that divide us that must change but haven't yet. I also wouldn't blame any of us for being exhausted during this global pandemic, the ongoing struggle for a racially just society, the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression, and on top of all of that, you've just finished your third year, the crucible of medical school training, and so many of you are in the midst of your sub-internships. You've cared for countless fellow human beings by now, help them through what for many of them were their hardest days and all the while learning, growing, and most of all, caring. And your peers and your faculty, a whole community of your colleagues were here today to remind you through everything, you've done it well. Know that, feel that, take a breath and soak it in how far you've come. When was the last time you've had a moment to take stock? That's what today, this evening is all about. And what I'm really curious about is also what you'll do tomorrow. Because tomorrow you might be congratulated by others in your life on your induction, and a few days after that, you'll carry that distinction with you as embodying the purest ideals of physicianhood back on your rotations, maybe wearing your pin on your white coats. And not long after that, residency programs will see your gold humanism induction on all your applications and ascribe it meaning that distinguishes you in their eyes. 
And not long after that, you'll find yourself with two new letters after your name and headed off to a great residency program where you'll lead your own teams of young physicians who will rightly project onto you their faith in your award-winning ability to count, care for countless patients more. And not long after that, you'll be graduating from residency with today's induction on your resume and a license to practice on your own with a career ahead of you in our storied, esteemed profession. And I can promise you that someday, when you look back on it, this whole journey will feel like a blink, a cascade of accumulated experience and responsibility born of hard work and opportunity. But in that blink, with little time to reflect, it can be easy to miss that along the way, there is also a change in how others might see you, and maybe how you see yourself. You might find that people, whether your patients or just people you meet at the grocery store or out walking your dog, will start to wonder things like whether addressing you as anything other than doctor might be disrespectful. You'll insist that they not be so formal, or maybe you'll acquiesce and go along with your new name and not make a big deal of it. After all, you earned it, right? What's the harm? But personally, I'll confess it's never sat well with me that people could be uncomfortable to call me by my unadorned, unawarded name. The name that my parents gave me, the name that I've always known as myself. But I also confess that as a direct result of disclosing occasionally my professional name, my, my alias, I've been excused from jury duty twice, offered better interest rates on loans, featured in an episode of a reality TV show, led off from traffic stops with only warnings, and been pleasantly and calmly walked back to the airport ticketing counter at San Francisco International Airport after running onto the tarmac in order to try and flag down the pilot in the cockpit of a 747 flight I had just missed pulling away from the gate. <laughs> It was not too long after 9-11, and the first thing that the San Francisco Police Department officer said to me when he saw me from the alarm door I just sprinted through was, you know where you're going? You're going to jail. The airport siren blaring behind him, my stomach sinking as I realized the mistake I'd made. Multiple officers ordered me inside, had me take a seat in the part of the gate where I wasn't in the earshot of the other travelers, and proceeded to interrogate me in the way you'd expect for someone who trespassed into a prohibited area near multiple jumbo airliners and almost got to the baggage loading cart. But as soon as I mentioned I was in the middle of medical school and desperately trying to make that flight to see my future wife, another medical student, for the first time in a month during the precious few days I had off, their tone changed. The jail talk stopped and I was handed off to TSA, an agent who made polite conversation with me on the way to find the next flight I could catch to Albuquerque. The honorific the titles, the trappings of physicianhood, all founded on the supposition of our embodiment of, professional, of our profession's highest ideals and the inculpability of our intent, can take on a presence in life of their own, can create expectations we might not have anticipated for ourselves. And while in some ways they make things, including our job, easier, they also create distinctions that we need to be sure don't prevent us from staying grounded in the authentic human connections that are the essence of our work, the work of humanism. The work that you all do so well of your unique, because of your uniquely vibrant, dynamic, and caring individual selves, the individual selves you are, not because of some abstract attribute of an idealized physician you're adept at channeling like some empty vessel communing in seance with William Osler's ghost. I'm talking about our privilege, of course, how we as physicians and future physicians acknowledge it, how we understand it, and most importantly, what we do with it. In this moment, it's incumbent for leaders in medicine to be mindful of their privilege, though we rarely talk about power and privilege in those terms in medical training. Today's induction, the MD, leading a team, completing your training, being entrusted to independently care for the lives of your fellow human beings, these are just a few in the series of honors that will ornament your careers. There are moments in which privilege is conferred. It's not necessarily good or bad, the statement is not making a judgment, but it is a fact that may be uncomfortable for us to look directly at because it makes transparent the choice and moral imperative we have around how we use that professional power and privilege. Think of these ceremonies, perhaps, honors and distinctions as trophies you'll accumulate that you've been accumulating since the start of your path. What will you do with them? Will you display them like precious objects on your resume or framed on your wall? Will you revisit them like idols to keep polished and gleaming? Will they come to matter more to you than the struggle, the hard work, and humanity by which you earned them? Or will you trust that it was never the trophies that defined your successes as a human being, 
and choose to melt the trophies down to create the means to elevate others. Familiar as you may or may not be with your professional privilege right now, having recently survived rotation after rotation as the least experienced and empowered members of your team during third year, you will have to reckon with it as you continue to rapidly collect your trophies. Consider where our privilege as physicians stems from, how it's projected onto us, not owned but lent. You may have inhabit it for a time, but it's never truly yours. And the urgent question is how you'll use that privilege. My hope is that you don't get too comfortable with it. Don't let your privilege change you. I think I've heard that from all the speakers tonight. Don't, don't let the comfort, uh, don't let uh, the comfort it, it offers silence your voice when moments of disquiet and distress are necessary. Instead, I hope you spend your privilege. You share it. How? Well, in case you haven't noticed, our healthcare system, the healthcare system you're inheriting and will have to grapple with longest, it has some issues. We have work to do, right? Medical errors is a leading cause of death. The profession's history of racism resulting in de facto medical segregation today. A healthcare system that too often can be summed up as your money or your life. These are part of medicine's legacy too. The baggage of the profession's privilege, we can't just ignore and hope things change, nor can we take for granted that our patients will blindly trust us until we get there. It's no mystery why marginalized communities feel less trust in the healthcare system, as if our past had no agency in the matter, or our presently, present was sufficiently discernible in language and action from the past to be worthy of their trust. Yet despite this legacy, many of our patients return because they believe that we intend for something better. They believe us when we say we will care, we will care about them as we care for them, care enough to try and get it right this time and next time and every time. The pledge you're about to take begins with three essential words. I will care. Why? Because who and what you care for, and what you stand for now, will guide what you do and how you shape medicine for generations, will shape the experience of the students who come after you, who will look up to you, who see you as the embodiment of their hopes. And your care will shape the lived experiences, not only of your patients, but their families and all the lives they touch. Commit to spending your privilege for them. In this year, in this moment, every day we're called to reaffirm our values and our commitments, to hold up our beliefs to reality, to see how we measure up. Not to some mythologized nostalgia for a bygone era of medicine's golden age, but to the urgency of now, and to the promise of future generations of physicians and patients who will look back and ask what we did when the healthcare system was in our hands. And more importantly, more immediately, how we measure up will be determined by what we do to earn our patients' trust today, tomorrow, and every day, because that trust and humility to know that it's never truly ours to keep is the only authentic foundation of medicine's privilege, I think. What I want you to know is that for all of medicine's flaws, the effort, the investment in what's possible if we collectively spend our privilege to reshape the largest industry in the US to promote health equitably can create a healthcare system in which we'll never have to worry whether our patients agree that we live up to the ideals of humanism by virtue of our participation in that very system and the stewardship of a better system. This is not blind faith, it's measured hope, and it's a belief in you, in us, that there are better days ahead and a commitment to put in the work to get there. That is what I take your oath to mean. I will care. The opposite of smug cynicism, the antidote to comfortable apathy, and the means to spend your privilege to lift others up. You can move us forward. You'll be the ones who decide whether medicine lives up to its oath. Throughout this privilege journey you've embarked upon, leave no doubt about what you and what we stand for and how much you and we care. And don't wait for tomorrow. Start today. Thanks and stay safe. Can't wait to get there with you. Congrats again. Thank you, Adam, for those really important and timely words. Each year, our Gold Humanism Honor Society students take on a number of projects designed to elevate humanistic care and the tenets of humanism in medicine. This is important. The induction into the GHHS is an honorific, but it brings with it a call to action. Last year, our students carried on the tradition of hosting Humanism Grand Rounds 
as well as a burnout prevention program designed to provide much needed support to medical students in their third year of training. Last year's Gold Humanism students also made significant contributions to the professional development of faculty and fellow students by creating educational programs addressing the provision of care to undocumented patients. This year's projects will no doubt be equally as meaningful. And today I'm thrilled to announce that this year we will be participating in the Gold Humanism Honor Society National Initiative entitled Humanism and Healing, Structural Racism and Its Impact on Medicine. Our chapter activities will focus on this important theme. As Sandra mentioned earlier, and as Lee mentioned as well, and as Kelsey mentioned as well, it lives deeply in our hearts. We were thrilled and so fortunate that Sandra and Arnold were here in person at the first induction for our GHHS class. At that event, Sandra shared with us a poem that had been inspirational to them in the early days of the GHHS. I'd like to take a moment to share that poem with you now. It's called The Way It Is by William Stafford. There's a thread that you follow. It goes among the things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you're pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it's hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt. Nothing you can do can stop times unfolding, but you don't ever let go of the thread. The Golds encourage us to think about the GHHS as a thread that we hold together. It may be delicate and almost invisible, but we can all feel it. It helps guide our way and it serves as a reminder of our interconnectedness. The Arnold P. Gold Foundation has gifted our GHHS members with a tactile reminder of that thread. All members receive a lapel pin to wear on their white coat. By wearing this pin, they are affirming their lifetime membership in the Gold Humanism Honor Society, as well as their role in advancing humanism in medicine and preserving the tradition of the caring physician. To our students, we hope that you will wear this pin proudly every day and that it will serve as a constant reminder of your shared values and purpose in medicine and your responsibilities as a role model. And now it is my pleasure to introduce my co-advisor and dear friend, Dr. Naveen Althara, who will read the names of all of the inductees and lead the members in the recitation of the Gold Humanism Honor Society Oath. Dr. Althara? Thank you, Dr. Yonkin. It is my honor to read the names of the students being inducted into the Gold Humanism Honor Society this evening. As I read the name of each student, we will highlight them. Please join me in honoring their special moment. Sabiha Abdullahi. Rachel Acree. Hosnan Ahlam. Annabelle Alcaraz Vargas. Sara Underbahan, Nikhil Bulumkanda, Elise Connolly, Emmanuel Cordova, Mona Deng. Jillian Foley. Andre Franco Vasquez. Anthony Mina Gobran. Christos Havales. Grant Howell. Simon Levinson. Patrick Lowe. Diana Lopez. 
Gabriela Lopez. Alexandra Mardock. Lydia Facudo Mesele. Jose Negrete Manriquez. David Jiro Okokawa. Roberta Palau. Sasha Para. Miriam Ramos. Simone Renault. Sarah Rudisil. Mercedes Scott. Alexander Soto. Ayman Tiham Ola. Olivia Ho Wu. Many congratulations to our student inductees on this very momentous occasion. Each year, our students select a faculty recipient for the Leonard Toe Humanism and Medicine Award. This special award recognizes a junior faculty member who demonstrates both clinical excellence and outstanding compassion in the delivery of care and who shows respect for patients, their families, and healthcare colleagues. They are an exemplar of humanism and medicine. A few of the many criteria include a consistent demonstration of compassion and empathy in the delivery of care of patients, a role model who illustrates professional behavior by example, someone who demonstrates cultural sensitivity in working with patients and families of diverse backgrounds, an individual who is sensitive to the patient's psychological well-being, an individual who's cooperative, respectful, and easy to work with, and someone who engenders trust and confidence. We are proud to announce that this year's recipient of the Leonard Toe Humanism and Medicine Award is Dr. Roya Jadi Mahsudi, Assistant Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Dr. Ajadi Mahsudi's faculty colleague writes that she embodies humanism in medicine, showing all of us by her example how to excel, not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of the most vulnerable in our society. She is an empathetic clinician, a fierce advocate for her patients and for health equity, a dedicated teacher, a mentor to students and residents, and a national leader in health services research focused on the mental health and substance abuse treatment needs of families experiencing homelessness. Dr. Ajari Mahsudi is a socially engaged physician, an advocate, and an inspiration for all of us. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Ajari Mahsudi as this year's recipient of the Leonard Toe Humanism in Medicine Award. This award brings, it with, brings it with it a lifetime membership to the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Dr. Mahsudi, it is my honor to welcome you as an inductee to the Gold Humanism Honor Society this evening. Congratulations. At this time, we would like to prepare our students for resuscitation of the Gold Humanism Honor Society Oath. If I could kindly ask everyone who is not being inducted, please turn off your audio and video at this time. For our inductees, please switch over to gallery view and make sure your audio and video are turned on so that we can recite the Gold Humanism Honor Society Oath together. I would like to remind you that if you are only seeing me and a handful of your classmates, you are in speaker view and we want you to be in gallery view. There is an icon in the upper right hand corner that will say gallery view. Please click on it once and you should see more people. Also, if you see any black boxes with names, we kindly ask that you hide non visit video participants by right clicking on any participant other than yourself who has their full video off 
or clicking on the blue box with the three dots in the upper right corner of the participant box. Please select hide non-video participant to hide all users with their videos off. Very good. GHHS inductees, please join me in reciting the oath which you have in your program. I pledge by all that I hold dear as a physician. I pledge by all that I hold dear as a physician. I will care for my patients with compassion, respect, empathy, integrity, and clinical excellence. I will care for my patients with compassion, respect, and empathy, integrity, and clinical excellence. I will listen to my patients with my whole being. I will listen to my patients with my whole being. I will add advocate for each patient as a unique individual. I will advocate for each patient as a unique individual. I will serve as a role model and mentor to promote humanism in healthcare. I will serve as a role model and mentor to promote humanism in healthcare. I will remember always the healing power of acts of caring. I will remember always the healing power of acts of caring. I will dedicate myself to joining with others to make health care optimal for all. I will dedicate myself to joining with others to make health care optimal, 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 optimal for all. Thank you. Live of live applause. Well, first, just a, I can't say a, a, a hearty enough congratulations to the, the new Gold Humanism Honor Society inductees, to these students. Congratulations to your families, to your friends, to your loved ones, to your partners, uh, as well as a, a heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Ejadi Magsudi for that wonderful honor and to your family as well. A very special thanks to you, Dr. Sandra Gold, for bringing heartfelt greetings from from our friends at the Arnold P. Gold Foundation and for the wonderful surprise visit, drop-in visit, to spend some time with us this evening. Uh, this is a, 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 one of the most premier events that we hold every year and particularly for me having I had the honor of setting up uh, two uh, of these societies at two different schools and, and it's a, just a wonderful tradition that um, uh, I just can't help but be inspired by. So may we all leave here inspired to infuse humanism into everything we do. Thank you all for attending. We wish everyone a peaceful holiday weekend. Stay safe and good night.